Good morning, my pretties. Um, so I am gonna do a um, coffee and talk time this morning. Uh, it has been a super busy week. Um, and as you all know, I put out a video every single day. I've only put out one other coffee and talk time. Um, and I didn't want to do too many of these because I don't want to take away from Halloween and the stories and the ghosts and, you know, all the things paranormal that goes on this channel. And also the fact that I do makeup as well. Um, so, and I still, I've got, I've got several eye makeup looks that I want to do. And I still got to do the, um special effects makeup uh, at least one more before Halloween gets here because it is fastly approaching and so yeah so I've got all that planned um, but to this morning I wanted to just kind of do a coffee and talk time and also I did pull up something related to the video that I done yesterday <laughs> which was pure insanity and it's, I mean, insane. It was insane. So, I done a um, human face pie. And I hope y'all enjoyed that video. <laughs> that was so awkward to make. And I was like, what do I title this video? When I put it on YouTube, like, making pie with a human face. <laughs> like... What, how do I even, I, I was like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to title this one. <laughs> so I just titled it the best I could. And I was like, I hope YouTube doesn't think like, oh God, um, you know, what is this? Like, don't, don't turn me into the reporters or, or the police or anything, but. Oh, and before I forget, I took the nails off. Like, I could not take it anymore. I was like. I love nails, but, um, oh my god, it's like, if you're not used to them, it's impossible to get anything done with nails, which I will say they were press-on nails, um, so if, if you ladies have had press-on nails, they're like, they're not, um, what you would say, glued down enough to do anything with. So, uh, they just popped right off and I was like, uh, I need to get some really good glue and put on, put them back on so I can finish, at least finish this month out with them. Because the last time I've had nails, I was able to make them last almost two weeks. So, and we don't have that many days left of October, so I think I can do it. Um, so if you have any good recommendations on good nail glue, please let me know in the comments. I want to know baby's awake one second okay i'm back yeah um so the kid was taking a nap early morning nap because he's been up for a little bit and uh well he's awake now if you hear that noise in the background that's my refrigerator i don't know what it'd be doing but it'd be doing something so in since the baby's awake um he's watching his little shows right now <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and just like jump straight into what I found or what I wanted to talk about. So, <laughs> I wanted to talk about Ed Gein's Cauldron. Yeah. So, we made the human face pie, right? So, yeah. He stuck his victims in this cauldron to cook them. So, I thought it was really, you know, relatable here. Um, also, because we're paranormal, the cauldron is supposedly supposed to be haunted. And I'm going to give you my opinion about it once I tell you the story. So, um, Zach Bagans currently has this cauldron in his museum. Okay, and if you've seen Sam and Colby, or if you, because that's, unless you've been to the museum, you, um, are not going to see it. You can't pull Oh well. You might see it in some of uh, Zach Bagan's uh, Ghost Adventures episodes. You could see it that way. But other than that, you can't take pictures. You can't take videos. You can't do nothing in that museum. 
um, just to keep it, mis I mean, I can understand why Zach done that, but recently he did let Sam and Colby come in there and they done a video, so you should go check them out and see, you know, their experience in the museum. It's, it's great. Um, but yeah, so, um, this article says, is this Ed Gein's cauldron? I'll, I'll insert a picture of the beautiful cauldron. Did the Wisconsin, Wisconsin killer and grave robber use it to hold the entrails of his victims? Here's the story behind the ghoulish relic, now on display in Ghost Adventures star Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum. And I will insert um, the pictures. And it says right here, Ed Gein's Cauldron as listed by Pinkasi, Pinka Auction Service, Pinka Auction Service. So they, they put his cauldron up for auction. Zach Bazin, he grabbed that up. If you've been following my writing long enough, this is somebody's article. Um, you're probably aware that Cult of Weirds base of operations is the weird backwoods of Wisconsin. Uniquely positioned in the heart of some of the strangest and most depraved crimes committed in modern times. Amidst our ghosts and goatmen, UFOs and hodag, hodags, there are other much more tangible evils lurking. So, he's just talking about, like, you should check out this, um, I think it's cultofweird.com. So, you should check out, um, the website and what all this dude does. Um, so it says, besides the Milwaukee cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer, who murdered and dismembered 16 young men before he was finally arrested in 1991, in 1957, the investigation of a missing hardware store owner in Plainfield led authorities to the discovery of eccentric handyman Ed Gein's deranged hobbies. Um, another plug I will put in is check out the Paranormal Files with Colin uh, Rowan and Jeff Rowan. Um, uh, they all go and visit Ed Gein's, like, the area, the town and stuff. They go to Plainfield, so check out his channel and his video on Ed Gein. It is wild. It is wild. Um, he does all paranormal, so check him out. Um, it says, for many of us here in Wisconsin who grew up with the boogeyman in our backyard, the story of Ed Gein becomes a lifelong fascination. In Plainfield, however, there are still families who remember or who remember or were directly affected by Gein's action. It doesn't take long to find someone who says they prob they were probably babysat by Gein, someone whose relative was exhumed by Gein, someone who ate Gein's homemade venison despite the fact that he didn't hunt, or someone who remembers seeing headlights in the cemetery at night because he would dig up. He's a very disturbing individual. <laughs> the so-called House of Horrors was very real and locals have been trying to heal from the wounds of that nightmare for nearly 60 years. I've been researching Gein since I was probably about 14. I have been to Plainfield many times and have written about those strange and tragic crimes on numerous occasions, hoping to unlock some of the mysteries that remain, uncover new stories, gain new insight into Ed's state of mind. Um, so this articles like all of his experience where he went to Plainfield um, I will link this um, in the description and I will put um, pictures up so you'll see pictures of the cauldron and stuff um, okay um, so is Ed Gein's cauldron, char cauldron charged with negative energy? The cauldron was featured in an April 2017 episode of Zat Bagan's seri series, Deadly Possessions, on the Travel Channel, streaming now on Hulu as Ghost Adventures Artifacts. So, yeah. Um, there's even a picture of inside the cauldron right here. It's nasty. Okay. You'll see it. 
The cauldron can now be seen on display at Vegan's Haunted Museum in Las Vegas, along with other reportedly haunted or cursed objects. So that was the end of the article. I skipped a whole lot of it because it was just about his experience with going to Plainfield and all that. Um, I want to have a little bit of time to tell you my experience with Ed Gein's cauldron. So, I've been to Zach Bagan's, I'm going to back it up. I've been to Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum, and I have like, I have a video way back talking about when I went to the museum and everything, you know, my experience with it. it it's, it's, um... If I can, at the end of this video, at the very end where my videos are, I'll try to put that. I'll specifically choose that so you can click on it and you can check it out. Um, but I just talk about, it's just a story time. And it's when I was just getting started, so I was kind of like a little awkward, but it's okay. I'm still awkward. <laughs> uh, but we went to the museum and um, I was just instantly fascinated um i think um i was just really overwhelmed with the fact that i was there i couldn't believe i was there and it was it was great experience by the way weird at sometimes but great uh, overall great um so so i don't have to go over all of the experience throughout the museum just check out that video i'll go straight to ed gein's uh cauldron so we went through several rooms, different situations, like different artifacts that Zach Bagans has got. And um, we reached Ed Gein's room with his cauldron. And Zach Bagans has really hit the nail on the head when it comes to giving you full experience and making you feel like you're in that time period. That's like that area like it, it's 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 insane like so when you go in that room it's almost like you're inside a barn um like and and this and he has the smells and everything like it really um i don't know it really just gets you in the mood like the feel of the of the whole experience of it I mean, like there's like a wood i can't it's hard to describe it's like a wood burned wood fight like smell barn smell like not animal barn smell but just just the wood smell it's insane um and i um we got to stand around the cauldron with our group because you always go with a group and your guide and we got to stand around the cauldron and i just i felt weird and naturally being you know human or whatever like you're gonna feel weird standing in front of a cauldron that you know people people's body parts and everything was in and it's overwhelming thinking about it now um it's it it was gosh like i can't even describe it um it was just really overwhelming <laughs> I don't know how else to put it was just really overwhelming and I felt um, my husband was with me now he didn't feel anything because he's like really uh, he, he don't believe in ish okay I just go put it bluntly like he's a skeptic as all like he does not open his mind up to any of this stuff he's just like no 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 so he didn't have any kind of experience <laughs> at all. Um, but when, you know, I feel like that I am more empathic, which doesn't, I'm not saying that I uh, see things. I don't see nothing, okay? I have seen things, but um, I, that I can't explain. And I feel things, but I feel more emotion from people. Like, you know what, like, so if I'm in like a bunch of people, it's just, it's draining. So being empathic, you just feel, okay? And it doesn't mean, you know, anybody can be empathic. It, it's not directed towards paranormal. It's just some people feel more than others, and I do. And um, 
I just felt really um, an overwhelming sense of like scared. I was like, okay, this is like, ew, and sad, and all of those things. And I just felt really eerie inside of that room. It was a very eerie presence. It was just like, this is creepy. And I can't say that I was feeling any things like victims or anything or whatever. It could, it's just, I guess, the, the thought and our humanness to say, you know, we feel, uh, it's just the, what, knowing what happened in the story about it makes it, makes it kind of, you know, like, oh, uh, that's kind of, that sucks, you know. Um, but, yeah, I didn't feel any, any, uh, or see anything. Um, other parts of the museum, yes, there was some situations. I was like, all right, we're getting intense here. It's getting a little, getting a little intense here. But Ed Gein's room specifically, because that's what we're talking about, I, um, did to, I didn't, like, you know, some people have all kinds of experiences in that room, um, especially women being touched or stuff like that. I did not, I don't, I don't remember being touched or anything. I just remember having the feelings, like a lot of the feelings. <clears throat> um, so if you ever go to Zach Bagan's museum, um, that room is really eerie, uh, as well as all the other rooms. Like, I don't even know, <laughs> like, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't get why Ed Gein or just to talk about it, I don't understand Jeffrey Dahmer, Ed Gein. There's so many more cannibal-like people. Like, I don't understand it. Like, I can't get, I, I don't, I just don't understand it. And with Dahmer, with Dahmer, I, I guess eating his victims, like he said, it feels like they were always with him. Which is the strangest thing. Like, why? Which, with Ed Gein's situation, he made, like, his victims, he made more, like, furniture and weird. Like, he made a, a belt um, out of nipples and um, made a lampshade out of, out of human skin, a chair thing out of human skin. Bowls out of human skulls. Um, the guy just really uh, utilized every part of a human skin and all into his things. <laughs> um, don't I don't I don't know why. Uh, but if you want to know the full story of Ed Gein, like down to the every, go check out the Paranormal Files. I recommend it again. Um, Colin really goes in and tells everything about Ed Gein, and it's, it's, it's fat, it's, well, it's fascinating, but at the same time, it's just like, ew. um, but I feel like the, the, the pie that I made yesterday was more geared towards Ed Gein. I said Jeffrey Dahmer in my video, but, um, uh, I guess, I guess it'd be more the same. I guess it would be the same, right? So, Ed Gein would make, <laughs> so sorry, Ed Gein would make the top of the pie out of the face, and, uh, well, Jeffrey Dahmer would just put the insides in the pie, so it, it, it's a combo, they're a duo, it's a duo thing right here, <laughs> so I think that would be like the perfect meal for those two individuals very disturbed individuals but anyways um <laughs> i know this is probably like a really quick video but i have like i've got errands to run today and um i don't know i got a lot to do today and i wanted to kind of just touch base on where we've got so far as far as like all the stories that i've told the documentaries the make like anything i've done up to this point to this video besides the other sit down and coffee video <clears throat> um just let me know in the comments you know what you think about it um 
let me know what you thought about yesterday. Should I do more cooking things like that that's related to um, paranormal? And this, and I can do that like throughout the year. It doesn't have to be just for Halloween. Like I can do certain, I don't know, recipes if there's any um, related to any kind of paranormal situation. And I already have one in mind. One just popped up in my head just now. That's crazy. Uh, so, mm, okay, I'm just gonna say. Um, the whole Charlie Lawson video. So, I done a Charlie Lawson where I went to the cemetery and I also went to the museum. So there's two different videos. Um, just check them out. Uh, I can link. I can link the Zach Reagans and one of the Charlie Lawsons. I'll probably do the. I'll probably do the museum part because the cemetery. I just went and looked. I had my family with me, so it wasn't anything like, you know, well, <laughs> okay, back up. So when I got back home and I was editing that video from the cemetery, I had some things out. Just check them both out. Check both the Charlie Lawson videos I've made out. Just check them out. You need to, um, <laughs> to, to understand what I'm saying. So, um, with Charlie Lawson, I'm going to go back to the museum, by the way. I'm also going to plug the fact that the museum was, uh, it's on Netflix, um, 28 Days Haunted. Um, the show 28 Days Haunted, you need to check that out. It, it's all about the Madison Dry Goods. Um, so, I want to go back there so bad. Um, but it's just fitting it in and then going to trap, you know, all that stuff. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to go back there. And why I said something just popped in my head about a recipe was, um, or the reason was, is because Marie was one of the daughters of Charlie Lawson, okay? And she was the oldest of the girls. And, um, that was weird. Anyways, that's something, my left ear, like, I don't know. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> um. She was the oldest daughter of Charlie Lawson, and she, right before Charlie committed such horrible acts, this man, um, she had made a raisin cake for Christmas Day, and as you know, the night before she had made a raisin cake, and um, he, uh, he murdered his whole family on Christmas Day, and, um, uh, so that would be something I could make, is a raisin cake, because it, it, play, it was a staple in the story, because after the murders, and after everything, after they were buried, um, after all that, the house still remained, um, open, and they started giving tours of this house, of Charlie Lawson's house, where the murders took place. They gave tours. It was like 25 cents, um, and you could go through, and you could like walk through and see the, like, everything that happened to that family. <clears throat> I am not getting emotional right now. That is crazy. Um, I... I don't know why I feel like I won't cry all of a sudden. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just the idea of what happened and the fact that there was a baby involved and I don't understand. Um, I don't understand how this man could just, um, could just do that to his whole family. So, I could do the raisin cake. I'm not gonna get emotional. Oh, uh, I could do the raisin cake. That would be fun to do, to make because um, it's related to something paranormal. And so, if you guys would like to see me um, do paranormal recipes, uh, if you will, I can do that. So let me know in the comments. I know like I'm rambling, but this is a coffee and talk time. So um, I'm sure there's other red. I'm, I'm sure there's other like stories like that where there was I mean I don't know like what was somebody's last dinner before 
something happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, just let me know. And if you know of any, let me know in the comments. Like, hey, I know this story. Like, this happened. And this is the, like, what was going down. Like, she was cooking or whatever. Like, just let me know. There's a, there's quite a few, actually, stories where we could talk about the story. And then I can make the recipe. Like, I done yesterday. Um, I could do, uh, um... Like a voiceover where I tell the story and then you can see me make whatever. And I'll make, I'll make it, like, you'll be able to tell what I'm doing. Like, yesterday was pretty simple. I don't think I had to do a voiceover as to what I was doing because it was pretty obvious. And I noticed that during editing, I was like, mm, this is kind of like, this is obvious. I, I don't feel like I have to tell this, but whatever. I'll tell it anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. But, as I said, I'm burping from the coffee. As I said, let me know everything in the comments, and we will go from there. We are at the 25th of October today, and it is, October is going fast, so we've got only a few days left. Uh, next Monday's Halloween, um, that's it. That's all she wrote for October. And I have managed to upload every single day so far. I'm going to say so far because we still got a few days. I could easily miss something. But so far, I have done every single day. I am proud of myself. I am so proud of myself. Because um, I, you know, I have been doing YouTube up till now. And I've, I've worked with what I had. I've worked with what editing software I had. And, um, now that I've got it all together, like, I'm trying to go strong, trying to go, trying to go hard, trying to make stuff, really good stuff, if I can, to the best of my ability. My battery's fixing to die, so I will see you guys. <laughs> I just saw it. It's like, man, damn it. Um, that was fast. My battery got drained. Anyways, um, I will see you guys in the next one, and, um, until next time, hit that like. If you're new, subscribe, and comment, comment, comment every every one of your thoughts like just let me know i will see you on the next one and i'll talk to you later bye